let's go ahead and just talk about some miscellaneous conditions. All right, chapter 15. We're going to go through this whole list basically pretty quickly because all you really need to know is just a very general knowledge of these conditions and tests. You may get a question on that, so we're going to go through very quick. With the only exception, pseudoaneurysm. By feedback, you're very likely to get a question or maybe even two on pseudoaneurysm. So what's a pseudoaneurysm? Well, why do they even say aneurysm? Well, it's pseudo or false aneurysm, but it presents as a palpable, pulsable mass on physical exams, similar to an aneurysm. But it's a false aneurysm. Basically, it's a defect or hole in that arterial wall. Uh, and this is commonly iatrogenic, hospital-acquired, such as following cardiac catheterization. And because of that, the common femoral artery is usually the most common site. But basically, it allows active blood flow outside the vessel that gets contained by the adventitia or more likely the surrounding tissues. So basically, how do we diagnose that? We want to identify that sac outside the vessel with active blood flow, and we want to document that neck or that connection. Basically, we get flow into and out of this with every cardiac contraction, basically a to and fro flow pattern in and out. That's the hallmark. Remember that. We want to say, well, where is it? How big is it? And in particular, we want to spend some time looking at that neck to see how long, how big it is, and to document that to and fro flow pattern. Well, how is this treated? Well, traditionally, surgical repair. The skin's open, the defect is isolated and closed, usually with a single stitch. But getting to that can be problematic. Uh, we did could do ultrasound-guided compression or ultrasound-guided thrombin injection. We'll talk about each of those. Basically, ultrasound-guided compression is we push it down until it uh, thrombosis. We might not be able to do that if we can't push hard enough to stop the flow into that. If the patient is anticoagulated or very tender, we're not going to be able to push. And again, you have to push pretty hard. So this is pretty strenuous for the sonographer to do. It is a medical procedure. You just don't find one and do it. Basically, you talk to the physician. That patient should sign an informed consent. We do alternate compressions with rest. We monitor distal perfusion. Sometimes it takes hour or more to actually get these to thrombose. Uh, the, the key is really the status of that neck or that communication tract. If it's wide or short, much less likely. If it's long or kind of meandering, like the example on the right, particularly if there's already thrombus there, then you're probably going to be able to do this pretty easily. And here's kind of an example of that. Thrombose pseudoaneurysm. Well, because of the time and the difficulty of doing this, actually, one of the alternatives is ultrasound-guided thrombin injection. Now, thrombin is the principal enzyme of hemostasis. It creates thrombus like that, immediately upon contact with blood. Now, this is an off-label uh, use. If you look at the bottle of thrombin, it says, do not inject. Nonetheless, this has actually become the standard and most widely used treatment option. We wouldn't want to do that if they're allergic to thrombin or bovine materials where this comes from, if they have an infection or ischemia of the overlying skin. If there's a very short or wide neck, we increase the risk of that thrombin getting out into the native circulation. Again, this is done by the, efficient, uh, the, the physician. We're actually just providing guidance. And so we image that uh, pseudoaneurysm in the neck. Uh, the physician inserts the needle into the sac and positions the tip of the needle away from the neck, farthest away. So we minimize the chance that gets in the native circulation. He injects the thrombin. We monitor distal perfusion. And then we evaluate the adjacent vessel as well as distal, kind of the idea is we want to try and make sure that none of that thrombin really entered the native circulation. This is kind of what it looks like here. Uh, the, actually, the neck I don't show you here is off to the left. You can kind of see the needle coming into the right. 
or from the right, okay, into the sack. It's positioned away from that neck. Going to inject a thrombin. Done. Just like that. Now, of course, following thrombosis, we're going to evaluate the native vessels to ensure that, in fact, no thrombin did enter the native circulation. 